Funding for this channel is provided by viewers like you. Thank you. Or should I say, trick or TBR verse? Hello! Welcome to video. This week is an especially exciting week because we are participating in the Trick or TBR readathon hosted by my good friends Sally Timms and Alexandra Ramps. Last week's video was a lot more work than I thought it would be, so this week we really need to take it easy. We didn't have the best health week last week. Let's just kick back, read some spooky things, be cozy, it's gonna be great. We're in front of the bookshelf to make a tentative TBR and also let's break down the bingo board. It's really simple, it's really low stakes. I'm excited to have some fun. The first space is the pumpkin patch space and this is just to read a book that has orange on the cover. The second space is sweater weather, which is to match your outfit to a book cover. The third space is haunted house, which is to read a book that's been haunting your shelves. The next row, there's the Sunday scary space, which is to watch a movie that's either creepy or cozy in the fall Halloween-y spirit. The fright night space, which is to read with a friend or join a reading sprint. Cozy corner, where you share your cozy autumnal reading nook that you've created for yourself. The witching hour, which is to read a book that has supernatural elements. Magic potion, make an autumnal treat or drink. And lastly, friend or foe, which is to read a book by an author that you're unfamiliar with or a genre you don't typically go to. So, most of these are activities, but there are still a few bookish spaces. I have a few books that I really, 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 really want to read this week. I truly have so many wonderful thrillers. I found like three last week going used bookstore shopping. So we're here to make a TBR. We're here to pick some spooky books. Let's prioritize. I have some books picked out, and most of them are on the thinner side, so I'm hoping that I can read four this week. I'm currently finishing up Ring Shop by PJ Lee Clark for our Pocket Pages book club. Today's the last day I can finish it, but I'm almost done, and she's really small. So the group of characters that we're following are hunting KKK members and said members are not even human. They're like zombies. It's very interesting. It's really setting the scene. So I'm gonna try and finish her today. I absolutely have to read Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. This is a lesbian aquatic horror. It's about these two wives. One of them goes on some kind of deep sea expedition and she returns, but wife number two is like, mm -mm. That's not my wife. And this is also technically a buddy read. I'm reading this one with Kat, so maybe this will count for the Fright Night space. I also really wanna read We Spread by Ian Reid. Ian Reid is the author who wrote I'm Thinking of Ending Things. I read it in 2020, I was so impressed with it. This one more so follows older characters and it's about the unraveling of your mind and how the world around you treats you when you're older, I think, but it still has thriller psychological elements. So not only is Ian Reid an author that impresses me and I think that what he writes is very creative and very interesting, I wanna pick up everything he writes, but also in one of Gabby Reid's most recent reading vlog. She read this one. It made her sob and I added it to my cart immediately. <laughs> and then last but not least, I really want to read Casadora, which is the second book in the Lobizona duology. It's a very fun YA where our character is actually a wolf when I think the girls are supposed to be witches. So not only is it questioning gendered expectations, but it also had really wonderful themes surrounding immigration and otherness and it was just so impressive. It somehow balanced being quite deep and covering quite serious things while also being so light and playful and whimsical. So really excited. Like, can we talk about how beautiful these books are? Are you kidding me? So while I can enjoy a thriller any time of the year, I feel like since these are just so fantastical and Halloween-y that I have to read Casadora before Halloween is up. So this is the tentative TBR. Let's get cozy, let's get spooky, let's get reading. Okay, hi. I just finished the last hundred or so pages of Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. This little novella packed such a punch. This one takes place in a sort of alternate universe. In the 1920s, after the film The Birth of a Nation is released, and said film plagues racists into being zombie-like KKK members. Like, the hate transforms them into these angry little creatures. And our group of characters are hunting these demon, zombie, creature, hateful things. This book was so much more twisted than I anticipated. There were so many 
different kinds of creatures that were just described all well. They were all just so unsettling. I also thought that despite being under 200 pages, the themes were still somehow so eloquently fleshed out. I love how they were talking about like artificial hate and justified hate and how artificial hate is the only real kind of hate, whereas justified hate is more so just suffering and how they tied that into this whole motif of truth and lies. I don't even know. I can't wait to discuss this. The Discord opens for it tomorrow. I'm very intrigued by this author. I think up next, I'm gonna read Julia Armfield's Our Wives Under the Sea because this one sort of had paranormal elements. I don't even know what they were. Spooky creature type things. And I'd like to keep that theme going because I believe this one is also a little bit supernatural. So I'll also start this one today. I've got to get some drawing done. It's been a good morning. <laughs> Crusty crew. Halloween sweater number one. Yesterday was a fall sweater. Today, full spooky. This morning, as you saw, I did some organizing of my bookshelves. I unhauled a few books, which maybe one day I'll make an unhaul video, but for now, I'm too shy to hurt people's feelings. <laughs> a lot of people were very upset that I didn't like the Song of Achilles in the last video, and you know what? I like to avoid conflict at all possible chances, so maybe one day I'll share which books I'm giving away, but today, not that day. But I'm really stoked because now I have a shelf specifically for nonfiction. I knew I had a lot of nonfiction, but I didn't know that I had enough for one full shelf. And then I also have a huge chunk, almost an entire shelf of just memoirs. It just feels nice to have that all in one place. And now there are actually holes in my official TM bookshelf. The only shelves that are cluttered now are my TBR shelves. <laughs> I was showing Lawrence and he said, you gotta get to the R. And I'm like, you're right, I do need to R more. That just felt good to do. That just felt really good to do. My bookshelves were getting a little bit crazy. And now it feels nice. Last night I started Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield and the intro is immediate. It's so ominous already. We're bouncing between Miri's perspective, which is the wife that did go into the ocean, and Leah's perspective, who did go in the ocean. And so Miri is in present day. She's living with whatever Leah is, whoever Leah is. And then we bounce to a very short chapter of Leah falling into the ocean in a sinking, breaking, no longer functioning submarine. I also want to knit today. I've been wanting to pick up crocheting or knitting for so long in our Discord. We've been talking in the art channel about knitting and crocheting. This morning I woke up with a special pep in my step because I knew I was going to pick a project and learn how to knit today. Which is honestly an act of therapy in and of itself because I have that personality flaw of thinking I need to be perfect at something first try. And so when I struggle <laughs> with knitting, I will need to sit in that discomfort and accept that I suck at something. So when's the last time you picked up something you sucked at? Comment down below. <laughs> Okay, I loved making the knots, loved that first step, but now this part where you stab it and then do this and then I don't even know what this is. I hate this part. My thingies, or rather my knuckles, Oh, when I close my hand regularly, can you see? My tendons don't stay where they're supposed to. They go to the side. You see what I mean? They pop. 
to the side. So here's my knuckle and the tendon hangs out in between. Crick, crick. So every time I have to do this weird stabby procedure, it's like literally grinding my gears. This is painful and discouraging to say the least, but we're learning. I was in good spirits up until this point. Ooh, yikes. I don't know, I'll check back in later. All right. I don't know what happened. I hate that they're connected. I get that this is helpful, but I actually hate it. I have to frog this whole thing. I learned that term in my Sims knitting game. My yarn keeps breaking. I got like too soft of a yarn. I don't know, it just keeps snapping. <sighs> I'm trying not to rage quit. My hands hurt. <laughs> this sucks. I'm not gonna be perfect at something. From the get go, it's fine. <sighs> this is supposed to be therapeutic. <laughs> Joke's on me. After getting frustrated by knitting, I did fall down a TikTok rabbit hole for a while, feeling sorry for myself. And then Lawrence and I went back to the yarn shop. Yes, I went to the yarn shop three times yesterday and got some materials for dinner so I can make a high protein dinner because apparently that's good for your moods. I don't know. And then I got some reading done in bed, just trying to relax. And this morning I got some serious Patreon progress done. I'm so excited about this month's design because I have been meaning to learn how to make a repeating pattern. You know, one that can be tiled and be seamless for so long, but I've been so intimidated by it and I finally figured it out and it's so cute and I'm so excited! This is what it looks like now. I'm so proud of it. I think it's so cute. I got to bring the worms back and now it's the next day. Cheers! I know that yesterday I said specifically that I didn't need to be perfect at something from the get-go but somehow I still threw a little hissy fit because I sucked at knitting. <laughs> this is what I think went wrong. Number one, I thought that in the beginning when you're making the little loops, I thought that that was knitting and that was very fun and easy and I enjoyed that so I gave myself false confidence and also a false idea of what was to come. <laughs> Secondly, due to my sensory sensitivities, I made sure to get a really soft yarn so that I'd actually wear what I made. But it was too soft and it snapped several times because I'm not that good at knitting yet and my tension is very off. Thirdly, I put way too much pressure on myself because I was stressing out about making something that was like pretty enough to wear, good enough to wear. Whereas I just needed to practice and not actually creating something worthy of using, you know? Fourthly, I understand that circular needles, you know, the ones that are connected by a little string like this. I get everyone's points and that they're great for beginners, but to be honest, I think it was tripping me up a little bit because now I'm worried about three strings and it was stressing me out and I felt like I had minimal control. So this is what we did to solve yesterday's qualms. Firstly, I got cheaper yarn that I wouldn't feel bad about quote unquote wasting, even though it's not a waste because you're learning, but it's also just typical yarn. Like you can tug at this, you can hear the sound it's making and it's not gonna break. We're not gonna make anything. I'm just gonna practice and frog it. Also, I got the grandma needles. The really long, not connected by a string needles, just to see. I just wanna know which one I prefer. I'm not going to start my day with this. I think that was also a mistake from yesterday. I am going to finish Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield because I am so close to being done. I am so impressed with this. This book plays the movie in my head so easily. It's so good. It makes me slow down. I'm savoring every word. It's so beautifully written. I'm gonna finish this book and then let's see what the rest of the day has in store. finished it. I finished Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. I have some thoughts. Most of them are confused thoughts. <laughs> I loved it, but I still crave more. I just wish that more of my questions were answered, though it really makes sense that they weren't. I think the biggest takeaway from this was just that the writing was exquisite, out of this world, gorgeous, had some really profound moments. Like I just loved my experience with this, even though I want more questions answered. I still loved it. That's where I'm at. I'm so tired today and my body is so achy, but it's like a beautiful fall day. It's kind of warm, it's sunny. I kind of want to go see if that oak tree is still beautifully fall and put together, but I'm not prepared for the disappointment if all the leaves had fallen off. I think I'm gonna force myself outside just so I can feel good about that. I haven't been leaving the house a lot, blah, blah, blah. Health, health, health. Let's check the bingo board, shall we? Okay, somehow the only point I have is the hat, despite reading two books. Because like, I guess technically both of those books had supernatural elements, I don't know. They were both very confusing and in a great way. And they weren't like regular, regular people doing regular, regular things. So I'm gonna count that as supernatural. So let's get a 
over to Pumpkin Space and read We Spread by Ian Reed because it has orange on the cover. I'm so excited. I really hope my tree is still kind of alive so I can sit under it and have a nice beautiful fall time and read this book. And then let's try and figure out more knitting. I'm determined. Break. We spent the entire day in bed today because either I'm getting sick with a cold or something or my body is just on some shit or both But we still did some things, okay? I edited for a little bit this morning. I finished We Spread by Ian Reed. I didn't take a lot of notes because it was just such a speedy reading experience. He writes like this where there's a lot of space in between everything. Not emotionally easy to say the least. Where to begin? So this follows an elderly woman who lost her long-term partner and is living alone in her apartment. And then eventually she is carted away to an old folks home of sorts. But there are some things that are strange about it and she feels like she's slowly losing her mind and everything's very confusing for her and for the reader. It definitely has that Ian Reed flair. So if you like the flavor of I'm thinking of ending things, I think you would also enjoy this book. But it was really sad and it was also really beautiful. I totally get why Gabby was crying in her reading vlog at the end of this one. Dementia, Alzheimer's, that runs in my family and that's a really big fear of mine. And so reading this one definitely provoked all of those fears, which in a way I really appreciated because it's refreshing, horrifyingly refreshing to be frightened of very real life things instead of a ghost, even though I believe in ghosts and murderers do we believe in them but you know what i mean i really liked it though could use some more but at the same time just like every other book we've read this week our wives under the sea ring shout i feel like if i had gotten more of what i wanted then the flavor of the soup would have changed drastically aside from reading this book i spent a lot of my time playing the sims i am balls deep in the storyline that i created of this mom who was a single mom she had a toddler it was just her and her daughter and the goal was the mom to earn as much money as possible so then her daughter could go to college and the mom's life has Inspiration was to be like the best parent ever. I have the parenthood pack and she achieved that dream by the time her daughter was accepted to university So she saved up the money so her daughter could go to university Her daughter's gonna go to university. I went through the trials and tribulations of getting said mom married She fell in love with a woman named Allison. She had a boyfriend named Mitchell But he didn't want to be exclusive woohoo partner So we had to part ways but her wife died So she reached her life goals and she no longer has a partner So now her new life goal is to also be a university student and now they live in this cute little house together And they both just started university. I had three cats visit at my house so I could pick one to adopt and I adopted all three cats. So welcome to the family Pockets, <laughs> Ario, and Gurmesh, Gur Gordish? I don't remember. I've been calling him Gurmesh. Gurmesh. Oh, yeah. so that's what's happening. Very invested in that. Probably gonna play some more before going to bed because I do not feel good. But before that, let's do a quick book haul because I got some book mail today and I thought that that could be fun. A bedtime book haul. First one is Samantha Schweblin's Seven Empty Houses. I honestly went in with this one blind. I just saw that she was coming out with a new book and pre-ordered it. Didn't need to know much else. Her name's on it. I'm sold. The Seven Houses and these seven stories are strange. 
boom. Then I got two non-fictions about autism. Hello. Unmasking autism has been on my online TBR for a hot minute, but then a friend of mine sent me a TikTok with this one and this one in it, so it's a sign from the gods. Hello. Dr. Devin Price shares his personal experience with masking and blends history, social science research, prescriptions, and personal profiles to tell a story of neurodivergence that has thus far been dominated by those on the outside looking in. True. Roomy. And then this one, Divergent Mind Thriving in a World That Wasn't Designed for You, specifically follows women's <laughs> experience being neurodivergent. Can I help you? We talked about both of these in the Discord and I took that as another sign. Read them immediately. Will she read them immediately? We'll see. We'll see, because there's a third nonfiction here today. Gathering Moss, A Natural and Cultural History of Mosses by Robin Will Kimmerer. Kimmerer wrote Breeding Sweetgrass, which is a book we read in the pocket pages in February, I believe, and it became a new favorite. How could a short essay on pecans or strawberries almost make me cry? Ask Robin. Ask Robin. So that's what we got. That's what came in the mail today. I'm excited. It's nonfiction season. I love reading nonfictions in the cold times. You know, the sun is sleeping. My imagination is sleeping. I can hunker down and focus on some facts. So this really lifted my spirits after such an icky day in bed. It wasn't icky. I played The Sims, but feeling icky. Also, I wore my really cute Halloween sweater because I knew that we would be hanging out today, but I was in bed most of the day, so I didn't get to show it off. I got it at a thrift store in like 2015. Okay, now you saw it. Good night. Welcome to Friday. Happy Friday. I'm wearing another Halloween sweater. This is my last one. Isn't she perfect? I also spent the morning making book trackers for Instagram for the Bloom and Readathon, which starts in one day. It starts on Tuesday, November 1st. Ta-da! It took me a long time to figure out the sizing and the placements of everything, but we've got her in three different colors, three different amounts of books. I'm so excited! I hope you will join us. Real quick, reading wrap up. I started reading Cazadora, the second book in the Libby Zoner duology. I haven't gotten too far. My health took a little dive this week. That's fine. I still read three books. The first one was Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark, which was our Pocket Pages book club for October. Next month, we are reading As Long As Grass Grows by Dina Gilio Whittaker. This is a nonfiction about the indigenous fight for environmental justice from colonization to Standing Rock. If you'd like to join the book club, I will link that down below. I then read Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. This one impressed me so much. I underlined so many things and I also learned so much about the ocean. And then last but not least, we read We Spread by Ian Reed. We talked about this just last night, but I'm still thinking about it. This one hurt my heart. It was also very beautifully written. I also underlined a lot of things. Owies. Well, let's do a quick bingo board check-in, shall we? So just in five days, we managed to get two bingos and an extra space. Quite a successful trick of TBR, if I do say so myself. So that's it. That was this week. It was pretty successful despite having a body. <laughs> I'm gonna get going. Please don't forget that the Bloom and Readathon starts on Tuesday. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Thank you to everyone on the Patreon who make it possible for me to upload as often as I do for making this my job. I appreciate you so much. It's because of y'all that I was able to take a sick day yesterday and then work instead tomorrow. Thank you. And as always, thank you for clicking. Thank you for caring and thank you for being nice. We'll see you in the next one. Bye!